Hi there. Now, in this last part of the question, we're told that the line L2 is parallel to L1 and passes through the midpoint of AB. Given that L2 intersects C at the points P and Q, for this last part, we've got to now find the length of PQ, given your answer in its simplest third form for three marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment then to pause the video. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So let's just put this line L2 that is parallel to L1 passing through the midpoint of AB on our diagram. It's going to be a line looking, say, something like this. OK, just put that there. OK, so this is the line L2. And the points then P and Q are going to be this one, say, for P, and this one, say, for Q. Obviously, it doesn't matter which way around we have these. It's not going to affect the length. Let's say that we have this point here, the midpoint. Let's label that as M. So what we've got to find then is the length PQ. And to do this, what I notice is that this line here, because it's parallel to the tangent, it must be perpendicular to AB. And so what I'm going to do is look at using Pythagoras' theorem. Because I know the distance AP, it's the radius of the circle. And in the first part, we found that if this were the equation of the circle, remember this was r squared. So we know that the radius is 10 units. So in other words, this distance A to P is 10 units. Let's just mark that in there. And that would mean also that AB, which is the radius, that is 10 units. But if this is the midpoint, this length AM must be 5 units. So because I've got a right angle triangle here, then I could use Pythagoras' theorem, get the length of PM, and then double it to get the length of PQ. So that's where we're going with this, OK? So by Pythagoras' theorem, if we consider this triangle AMP, we see that this is the hypotenuse, AP. So this length here, a shorter side, must be, when squared, equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is 10 squared, minus the other shorter side squared. So that would be 5 squared. And if we work this out, we've got 100 minus 25, which is 75. So therefore, the length PM must be equal to the root, then, of 75. So now that I've got the length of PM, all I've got to do is double it to get the length of PQ. So therefore, PQ must be equal to 2 lots of root 75. But remember, this question says, give your answer in its simplest third form. And root 75 breaks down to the square root of 25 times 3. And so I can square root the 25, which is 5. So you're going to get 2 times 5, which is 10. And then you've just got the root 3. OK, 10 root 3 then for the length of PQ.